Hello YouTube! Lately I've been consuming a wide variety yet brief knowledge on forensic science, the application of science and law. Every week I get two lectures on like Canadian judicial system of crime, um, death investigation, fingerprint analysis, collision, how people decay. It's really interesting and left me speechless. More so because I had a hard time pronouncing half the words. Someone had asked me about what the forensics program is like and how to apply for it at SMU. Well, I can't speak for the whole program. I would like to share a brief overview of my perspective. This is going to be a sit-down video. I linked the timeline down below so you can skip around if you like. This video is divided into four parts, the first being an overview of the forensics program, then I'll talk about what the classes are like, then I'll give you an example of me struggling with the lab, lastly, just a brief conclusion. This video is linked with another article that I wrote on the SMU website. If you don't already know, St. Mary's has a forensic certificate program offered to undergrads. It gives insights into forensic science and how it works, it explores different topics by inviting respected professionals to talk about these areas. It's small in a group of about 20 students, um, so you'll be seeing the same faces a lot. Everyone can apply requiring that you meet the prerequisites. Normally people apply in their first or second year and then go into the program in the following year. It's a two-year built-in slash add-on program, which means that you can't major in this forensic certificate program. For me, it's like I'm a psych major with a certificate in forensic science, if that makes sense. But this doesn't mean that your four-year program is going to take six years to graduate. No, 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 no. You can still graduate in four years with your major. You just have to pick and choose your courses more carefully. Classes are lecture styles. The program invites um, professionals to come and talk about their field of interest. So for example, we have the chief medical examiner from the NS morgue to, uh, to talk about death investigation. Classes are about two and a half hours uh, from 6 to 8.30 p.m. every Tuesday and Thursday. It is a little bit long if you are not used to these kind of long lectures. Um, my tip for you is to ask questions just to keep yourself engaged. I would highlight some of the topics we have talked about in this semester. For example, the Canadian Division of Power, Law and the Courts, uh, Forensics Anthropology, looking at skulls, fingerprint analysis, comparing fingerprints, um, and calculating the speed of momentum and vo velocity of a car accident. I would say readings are a average amount, about 20 to 30 pages per chapter. Uh, you do have to read the readings for the exam. One of the labs we did this semester is looking at fingerprints. So we have to put our print on a piece of paper, take a picture, compare this print to a computer with a print taken from a surface, like glass. Now this is much harder than you think. I think I literally took the whole day painting my fingers purple. I'm starting to lose patience. When you're in university, you're doing kindergarten homework. <laughs> and analyzing which bifurcations and rich endings match the other print really killed my eyes. So I would say don't underestimate the time you need for this lab. And the cool thing is that this is what real life fingerprint comparison is like. It's done by person and not by computer. The computer may give you a list of candidates for that could potentially match the sample print, but it's totally up to the expert to decide which of these two prints match. And you can see how criticisms would arise with such method. And that is why we're slowly moving towards the reliance of DNA. However, there are questions about DNA as well. Um, some, some crimes don't have rich DNA evidence, and there's an ethical concern as to the collection of DNA evidence. And there's also a social aspect to it too. Now, this is off topic, but the infallible nature we put on DNA evidence and just
just the observation that society is slowly moving towards a truth based on scientific understanding and methods instead of the reliance on religion or intuition or feelings. And this may have seemed obvious to you that, yeah, um, science is right, but we have to understand that there has been decades and decades of reshaping our philosophy of truth. Okay, now this is really off topic, so next! Now what do I have to talk about now? So hopefully this has cleared some of the ambiguity of this program, and if you're a first year student who wants to be in the forensics program, I encourage you to apply. I don't think I've said this, but I do enjoy the program, the applications, Deadlines is in February, and keep a look out of that. So before then, um, I guess Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays, and good luck on your exams. I know, <laughs> it's almost finished.